Smaller particles go through the bag and the big particles clog the bag. Mm -hmm. And all they do, they line the bag. Right. So after about 10 to 15 minutes of cleaning with your vacuum cleaner, the bag is, is lined mm -hmm. and it's clogged. So therefore it can't move air from yeah. point A to point B, therefore it can't clean. The bag doesn't have to be full for it to lose cleaning ability. Right. It just has to be coated. That's why when you take a vacuum cleaner bag and you squeeze it, it's fluffy. It's filled up with fluffy material, which is dog hair, cat hair, string, lint, carpet fibers, furniture fibers that are being destroyed by the sand and grit that's being left behind by your vacuum cleaner. Okay? Because see, if it was filled with dirt, it would be like a five pound bag of sugar. Wouldn't it? Now, we used to tear the bag open and show them all that fluff in there, but that's that gets real dirty. So. Okay. So what I use. Yeah. yeah, most people have bagless now. Yeah, yeah but that's the same thing. You got filters on the side. So all you do yeah. is take the filter off the side, take your light, go boop. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. And that's what's bad. in the cup? The fluffy stuff. Yeah. The string. The, 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 the same thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I also ask them. Um, you know, whenever I'm doing the vac kill and I'm talking about the bacteria, because I kind of do mine together. I don't flip through the book. I say what's in the book, but I'm actually up demonstrating, talking right. to them about it. I'm talking to them about the bacteria and, you know, how it grows and you store it. I was like, I'm sure you don't vacuum and then go scrub out your cup with hot, you know, dump it, get that big dust cloud, scrub it out with hot soapy water, put it in the sun to air dry, wash your filters, let them air dry, build it back together and then put it away. No, okay. you vacuum stick it in the closet. Okay, what we're going to do is, uh, next time you guys sell, take their vacuum. Yeah. Just give me a couple of vacuum cleaners in here that I can kill for you. Okay. okay. That way I'll, I'll do this again. Okay. Okay. Maybe what I should do today is just, um, you know what, why don't we do that? Why don't you video the next time I come down where I got a vacuum and I can do the demo the right way. Okay. Because, I mean, you can still video what I'm saying. Yeah, because I'm sure a conversation okay. will come up today that's useful, but, uh, too. The first thing I would do in my book, if I were you, is if you could open up to those price pages again. If you will, I'm going to take your vacuum and get rid of it for you because you're not going to use it, right? I mean, you're not going to try and use that thing, right? Right. I mean, not really. You're not going to use it, right? <laughs> okay, good. So I'll get rid of it for you, okay? Provide me the names of eight people you think that should know this equipment is on the market. People with breathing problems, small children, house pets, picky housekeepers, blah, 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 right? Um, and place your order today. We give you a first call special. We take $500 off if you do these things, these things right now, bringing your price down to twenty-seven ninety five. $27.95. Now, what do you do with those? Because that's, I think that's which is basically what this sells right here. Because we don't, yeah. I mean, so. we ask for the referrals, but we, like by putting that in part okay, of the, the discount right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, do they with getting those names and numbers, or that is that something you want? They have to set it. The eight people. No, no, they, they just, just gotta give me eight names on a referral sheet. Okay. Right. I've never seen. But that. they gotta fill out this part at the end, at the front of the demo. They fill out, you get the 10 yeah, names. You pull the first names. Names, only, first you know? names, because we have to earn the right to get the last yeah, name. Yeah, but by, when you walk out the door, you got to have this part. Yeah. And that's the QPE. If you look at the training videos, the ones that are called QPE with Charles Schroeder, who takes five minutes and does goes through. He says to the people, you know, he finds out which of these are couples, which right. have allergies, which, and he ranks them. If you were me and you are trying to sell the rainbow, who would you go to first and why? You know, and then that's why there's little numbers, one to nine, and you're supposed to ask. And then you're supposed to say, no, if you were me and you're trying to sell the rainbow. Because sometimes they'll think, trying to give away rainmates to everybody. Oh, you know, this is my 95-year-old grandma with emphysema in the nursing home. She's a great prospect. Everybody there is. No, they're not, you know. So then if, if you were me and you're trying to sell the rainbow, who would you not go to on this list and why? Is there anybody that's like, a, you know, in the middle of a divorce or they lost their job or, you know, in a bad situation or something like that? You know, and then they'll tell you, you know, and then you cross those off, you know, that way you can pick which of the leads. That's why sometimes people get frustrated, you know, with riders and they say, oh, we were, you know, we were talking about this, how sometimes the riders will try to manipulate things and save the, you know, take your own bullshit doubles at first and save the better ones for last or whatever. You can control that, you know what I mean? Because before you walk out the door, you should know which of the people on that list are the really good ones and which ones are ones that we are not going to do. So, 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 so,
to, uh, we, you know, we tell them about the manufacturer. Uh, your first one, the four reasons why you're here, I think, is the first thing. No, it's after. Second one. Okay. Yeah. So you got to tell them about the Rex Air. What, what do you want to tell them about Rex Air? Been around for 80 years since, since 1936. U.S. US made in made. America, where's yeah. it made? Michigan. In, well, Troy, Troy, Michigan. Michigan. Troy, Michigan, and Cadillac. Well, Cadillac, Cadillac is where Troy's it's made. the headquarters. Right. Been in business since 1936. Direct Selling Association. High quality products since 1936. Member of American Direct Selling Association. And we sell our products through independently owned distributorships. Okay. Now, I'm basically here for four reasons. This is where you're going to set the stage. The first reason I'm here is to, tell, is to thank you for your time and present you with a gift for, for allowing me to show you the rainbow. So whatever gift you're using at this point, is this, are you guys rain using rainmates? Yeah. Now, at this point, is this where you would do your Rainmade demo? Depen I, or I do it. Yeah, she does. Some people, I wait until the full intro. Yeah, me too. And then What's the full intro? Pretty much talking up to this point. So it's pretty much allergies, asthma, and dust mites. Okay, so you, lamp, but you show them the Rainmade at this point. Yeah, and then after you get to, so, we clean with water, so and then yes. we just when something to think about. The reason why I do the rain makeup right now uh -huh. is because I want them to smell it. Yeah. And I have gone into so many houses where they're like, I can already tell the difference. Yeah. So I and I turn my rainbow on at the beginning on low, so that when I get to it, I can say it's been on this whole time, and you haven't even noticed. Now, do you guys instant set so. at this point when you're done showing them the rain makeup? At, at the rain makeup. At the rain makeup. So whether it's right now or whether it's after the intro, right. when you show them the rain made, yeah. that's where you do your instant sets. Mm -hmm. And what do they have to do to get a rain? Another rain. So what we have now is a 24 hour set where they set one done within 24 hours or if they can't set one within 24, you set three within 72. And, and they, all of it. Yeah. Okay. They have to be submitted and and actually done. It can't be like canceled. So if they set one demo for me at this, at this point or at the intro, uh -huh. um, they get another ring. Correct. So is that the run first? So what Jane was saying is if they set three in the house, then they can have theirs because most likely one will set. One right. will go. Okay. But if not, they have to come to the open house and get their ring you know, after, after the, the first yeah. one's run. Yeah. Okay. It has to be run within 24 hours. Right. Okay. All right. So, okay. So if you're instant set, if you're rain, showing your rain mate now, you would do your instant set program. If you're doing it after the intro, you would do it then. Right. Right. Okay. Now, what does it? Uh, the four reasons I'm here. One to thank you for your time, allowing me to show you the rainbow. We have a nice gift for you. Boom. Rainbow. All right. Okay. The second reason is to get your opinion on our product, the rainbow, and uh, hopes that we can interest you in buying one now or in the future. Okay. I know that doesn't say yeah. that, uh -huh. but that's what I say. Yeah. I'm going to show you the rainbow because I want your opinion on it, and I'm, I'm hoping that you would be interested in buying one now or in the future. I mean, they're not stupid. They know that you're there and you're going to try right. and sell Why? it. Why? You're trying to sell me something? Mm -hmm. I course. thought I was just getting this free thing. No, no. I want to interest you in getting one. Well, I mean, if you like what you saw, you'd probably want to buy it, right? So I'm hoping that you like what you see and interest you in buying one now or in the future. Now, little do they know the future's coming very quickly. <laughs> it's in about two hours, yes. okay? And that's why we want to have that pricing the right way, the suggested retail minus the discount, and these are the things you need to do to get the discount, okay? So again, it's to interest you in buying one now or in the future, okay? The third reason I'm here is we're, we're growing and we're looking for good quality people on a full and a part-time basis. So if you know anybody that you think that might be interested in making an extra thousand or two thousand dollars a month working part-time around their school or work schedule, don't let me forget to talk to you about that at the end. I take my keys and my don't let me forget brochure. And I put them on the coffee on the coffee table I just moved. Why? So you have, don't forget. I can't leave without those keys. Yeah. And as soon as I pick the keys up, it says don't let me forget. So <laughs> I'm not gonna forget to talk to him about the opportunity, right? And the fourth reason is to ask your help 
and advertising our product to your friends and, and associates. Now, I mean, you gave me the first names of people you know. Uh, and at the end, I'm going to ask you for the last names because we feel that we have to earn the right to get the last name. So at the end of the demo, if you feel that uh, uh, you'd like to, uh, you know, I've earned the right to get the last names from you, I'll ask you for the last names. You need basically three things to work. You need to eat, you need to drink liquid, and you need to breathe air. Okay? Now, would you say that you could live without any one of those three? So breathing clean air is just as important as eating good food or drinking pure water, would you say? Right. Okay. So let's talk about the air quality in your home. Okay? Now this is where... <coughs> Each day you breathe several hundred cubic feet of air. Clean air is just as important as it is. You suffer from allergies, asthma, headaches. Okay. Uh, many, many reports show that the air in the average home is more polluted than the uh, um, most severe outdoor air pollution problem we have. Because, see, we've gotten very good at sealing up our homes and businesses to conserve energy. We have magnetic doors. We have thermal pane windows. We seal everything up and tie back to save energy, right? Keep our uh, air conditioning costs and heating costs down. The problem is there's no air exchange. Okay? So you might say to me, well, you know, years ago, my grandmother, she didn't have to worry. That's because years ago, your grandmother lived in a farmhouse and the windows all leaked air, and there was air movement in the house, and that's why the situation wasn't nearly as severe as it is today. Okay, so I simply went online and Googled up American Lung Association. Uh, there's <coughs> thousands of these things. All you gotta do is Google this stuff up. There's so much stuff you can talk about. Did you know, here's some facts you should know, all right? Lung disease is the third leading cause of death in America. <coughs> Three out of every four Americans is afflicted with lung disease, including asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, lung cancer, and tuberculosis. Lung disease, including lung cancer, is responsible for more deaths annually than cocaine, heroin, alcohol abuse, auto accidents, suicide, and homicide combined. Breathing problems are the leading cause of infant death syndrome. One out of every American, one out of every 100 American newborns dies from in, from this uh, what, what, they, what, what the, the uh, instant death syndrome. And they're saying, I don't know if this, I don't know how accurate this is, but they're saying a child, uh, you know, when it comes out of the womb and it gets exposed to the pollutants, okay that they have such a severe allergic reaction that their lungs stop working. Okay. Each year, over 70,000 Americans die from the flu and pneumonia. Now, am I making any of this up? What's it say there? American Lung Association. American Lung Association. Okay. It's not, I didn't, I didn't type this up. This is readily available online. I have it all too. It's yeah. my demo okay. I'm just saying, this stuff, don't ever use something that isn't documented, okay? Occupational lung disease is the number one cause of work-related disease and injury and is almost 100% preventable. Americans spend almost 420 million days each year in bed because of acute respiratory conditions. And we all know about secondhand smoke. Well, guess what? There's some more facts you should know. I brought along with me. Now this is from the United States Public Health Commission. More than 85% of infections and parasitic diseases are caused by what we breathe, not what we eat or drink. Most people think when they get sick, it's as a result of them drinking something bad or eating something bad. What they're saying is that 85% of the time it's, in, it's ingested through your lungs, okay? Today, pure food and water laws assure us of germ-free foods and beverages, but who's, what about the air we're breathing? 
okay? Most deaths resulting from tuberculosis, diphtheria, pneumonia, and other contagious diseases result from infection caused by dust in the home. Work, and I was working in Vancouver, Canada, and I got severely ill. Because my mom told me, put your coat on, you're going to get exactly. pneumonia. <laughs> I didn't know, I, I thought you got pneumonia from like being yeah. getting oh. cold, right? right? right. Yeah, and the doctor looked at me and he said, Sam, you don't get, pneumonia is an airborne bacteria or virus, because there's two types, viral and bacterial. Okay, he says it's in the air. Okay, that's why it's contagious. And this says right here that it results from infection caused by dust in the home. See, the dust is the carrier. Okay. Now I brought some sunshine with me to show you to, to illustrate this thing. When I turn my light on, what do you see between the light and the my hand? Dust. Little particles. And you call them dust, right? Okay? That doesn't look too bad, does it? Don't worry about it, it's my phone. Oh, that's your, okay. Don't look too bad, does right. it? No. Okay. But see, here's the problem. Any movement causes this condition to be kicked up into the air. Sitting on the furniture. Walking across the carpet. Kicks this condition up into the air. Okay? We call the house dust smog. Smog. Okay? Anytime you, you, any movement, turning on a lampshade, turning on a light, <laughs> disturbing the lampshade. And if they got a lampshade over there, I'll go over there and go yeah. like it. Just yeah. click the lampshade, big pile of crap comes out. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, okay, I'm going to get into what is that. Yeah. What is dust in a minute? Because yeah. most, most people say, well, it's dust. Like it's. Just dust. Like it's, Outside, it's, it's dirt. It's, it's dust. <laughs> I've been doing that on um, people's dog beds lately. Oh. And um, they're like, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. So what is that stuff? It's pet dander. And what is it when you when you disgusting. scrape the dog bed? What is that? Poopy. It's all kinds. Well, of Dr. Zam, he's a famous allergist, and in the '80s he wrote a book, Why Your House May Endanger Your Health. He broke house dust down into four categories. Plant, animal, man-made, and the filth of society. Okay? The filth of society is the stuff that you walk in every day, you step in people's spit, dogs do their business that day, you step in chewing gum, whatever, and you bring it in the house and you deposit it on the floor, whether they're carpet, hardwood, vinyl, doesn't matter. That's the stuff we bring in from outside. Then he broke it down into plant, animal, man-made. Plant is like mold spores. Cellulose, linen, capic, jute, jute wood, pollens, uh, animals, pet dander, fragments from moths, cockroaches, silverfish, fleas, beetles, ants, flies. Do you ever have a fly die on your windowsill? You don't clean it up. A week later, it's gone. It decomposed, and it became part of house dust. So now they're breathing all that. Then you got man-made, Aquilon, Dacron, fiberglass, Orlon, Rayon, Spandex, paints, plastic, cigarette smoke. These are all components of house dust. Now let me ask you a question. Would you say this sounds like a healthy or an unhealthy condition? Unhealthy. And it's sealed up in here, isn't it? Right. It's not. It's not going away. Okay. It is, you try to make it go away, and I'll get into that in a second. Pneumonia is caused by dust, not cold and exposure. I just went over that. Listen to this. After a short incubation period, ordinary carpet dirt contained, as collected by a vacuum cleaner, contained over 99 million germs and bacteria in each ounce. You ever notice your vacuum? No, I didn't get the vacuum right. yet, but what am I going to do now? Plant a seed. Did you ever notice your vacuum smells? Uh-huh. Horrible. It's germ and bacteria. It's you see, odor is germ and bacteria. <clears throat> what? I've had people When say, your armpits no, smell, it's because there's germ and bacteria. <laughs> when you open the refrigerator and decide it smells, you know there's a science project in there somewhere, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay? 
got where you said. I've had people lately, I've had three people say, my vacuum doesn't smell. No? And as soon as I turn it on, I'm like, I know. yes, it does. I know, but I'm like, I, I'm like, I don't know what to say to that. Well, no, you just say, I okay, it. well, maybe yeah. yours doesn't. But maybe you don't have I'll, bacteria. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that later. <laughs> like everyone else You'll does. get to that later, because that's where you take your vacuum cleaner and you turn it on and you put it up to their face and say, uh -huh. does it smell? Yeah. All right. Good. But I also you, have people that'll say, I don't even have dogs, and my vacuum cleaner smells like a dog. Uh -huh. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Well, it's because germs of bacteria. Where does germs of bacteria grow, breed, multiply? Darkness, Dark. warmth, and filth. Ideal conditions for germs and bacteria to grow, breed, and multiply. A vacuum cleaner, you put a new bag in it, picks up dirt, right, to the lines of the bag, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got the we got the filth in there. It's picking up fly eyes and cockroaches and fleas and beetles, ants, all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then what do you do with it? You store it in a dark. You place. put it in the closet. It's yeah. dark in there, isn't it? All right. Is it warm in there? Oh yeah. Moisture is provided by the motor. As it runs, it heats up. When it cools down, it provides condensation, which provides plenty of moisture inside the bag. Ideal conditions for germs and bacteria to grow, breed, and multiply. Okay? That's why your vacuum smells. So the only way around that is what? Change the bag every time you use it, right? Why don't you use change the bag every time you use it? Why well, not a bag? Well, okay. Change your filters every time you use it. How much would it cost to change the filters every time you use that what? bagless vacuum? Ten, five, ten bucks? I don't know how much a filter is. Oh, they're expensive. Probably about 15 or 20. Really? Yeah. yeah. Least, but still, like so every time you vacuum, like, like, like that's... All. The Dyson is the worst vacuum cleaner on the market. <laughs> okay? And anyone that ever buys one hates them. <coughs> okay? They're horrible. <laughs> But the good thing is they tried to buy a good one and they spent Yeah, well, yeah, they think they, but they, people, look, hey, happens. look, people try to buy good cleaning equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do. Shit, I mean, Kirby's been, you know, by, Kirby's been around forever. It's a very expensive vacuum plant. Electrolux, filter queen, you know, blah, 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 you know. You, know you still kill it. Yeah. Just yeah. like any other vacuum. Yeah. Look, that's why we sell one out of three. Guess what? We sell one out of three, two out of three don't buy. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yeah. We're not going to sell everybody. Right. So there's always going to be the two out of three that don't buy, whether it's I got a new Dyson or I don't, you know, I want to think about it or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. objection they may end up coming up with. The thing yeah. is that when you get in a house, if they're bragging about their machine, you know, that's a good sign. That yeah. means they care. Agree I with them. Show yeah. like that. Yeah. First thing you do yeah. is agree with them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure the reason you bought your Dyson is because it's supposed to be a good one. Yeah. But let me show you a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Our Take uncle did the same thing. He had just bought a brand new vacuum cleaner. Shark. And he vacuumed 30 times before. 15. Okay, 15. <laughs> Whatever. He's like it didn't ridiculous matter. anal. So, like, when he says he went over each spot 15 times, he went over each spot 15 times. And then I pulled that much. Right. <laughs> like, on one pass. You guys do Cat the 50 stroke test with the power nozzle at the end, I hope, right? Yeah. We, we were telling you, it's. We don't do we don't use the hose. We still we do vacuum the yeah. carpet. Yeah. Oh, well, you don't have to use yeah. the hose. I just I just make a U out of the hose, and I'm cleaning inside the hose. the U fifty times, well twenty five times. One, two, three, four, more. With back. the impulse tool or with the power? No, with, with power their power. vacuum. Oh, with their vacuum. I do both. Now that now if you clean power. once a week for a year, that's fifty two. Mm, that's I just did a year's worth of cleaning. I was wondering where you got the 52 from. Now let me let me show you what's still there. Now I'm going to put my cloth in there with the upholstery tool. Oh, that's much easier than doing the whole damn thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you do it with their vacuum the 50 oh, yeah. times. Oh yeah. Then with the upholstery tool. Yeah. Or no, with the power nozzle. Like it's the power nozzle. Yeah, you do their vacuum in the U, and you then you hook up. You can do power nozzle. Yeah. You can do the mini mini. You can we do use the their, rainbow yeah. main. You can do the upholstery tool. Yeah. The point is, is you're going to show them a black desk cloth with all kinds of crap in it after they just you just clean with their vacuum right. 50 times. Right. Okay. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And the reason it doesn't work is again, basic physics dictates mm -hmm. that a vacuum cleaner bag looks like this under a microscope. When the big dirt comes in, it plugs the holes. When the little dirt comes in, it goes through the holes. This is basic physics. It has to do that. Mm -hmm. So the more you clean with the vacuum, the less you clean. Right. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. 
And, and, then, and again, the bag doesn't have to be full, it just has to be coated. Right. So <laughs> how does that then work with the canister? It's same the same thing, thing with filter. the foamy filters? Filter. Because it's yeah. a filter. Yeah, because look, there is pores look, as well. It, yeah. it doesn't matter what shape, color, size, creed comes out of the closet. They all have four basic parts. They all have an intake where the dirt is supposed to go in. They all have an exhaust where the air comes out. They all have a motor and they all have some kind of collection device, which is typically a bag or a, whether it's paper or cloth. Doesn't matter whether it's a canister, upright, torpedo, doesn't matter. Those four basic conditions exist no matter what kind of vacuum they're in. So, what happens is, and that's why they say, well, I got a bagless one, because somehow or other the American people have been uh, brainwashed on television that no bag is a good deal. No bag doesn't mean anything. I mean, there's, there's still filters on it. There has to be. <laughs> or else you'd have meteorites flying around your house. <laughs> right? Yep. You've got to have something to trap the dirt. Or stop the particles from coming out of the machine and keeping it in a can, a, you know, a cup or something. And that would be the filters they put on the side of those machines. The big long filters are on the side. And if you look at them, no wonder the thing's filled up with string and carpet and stuff. I mean, there's no air going through this machine. It can't. Let me thing. show you why. And you take the filter and you just go boop with the light. Uh, you know, it's, it, there's just no way you can make them work. There's only one way that you're going to get rid of dirt in your home, and that's with water. Period. I mean, there, there's no other, there is no other way. I don't care how many filters you put on it, the more filters you put on it, the more you restrict the airflow. You see, in order, and see, everybody thinks that suction is what cleans. Mm -hmm. Suction has nothing to do with cleaning at all. If suction cleaned, you could go around your house with a plunger. <laughs> okay? Suction doesn't do anything. <laughs> Actually, if you look up the, the word suction in, in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, it says an absence of void of air a nothing. So you must be trying to clean with a nothing cleaner. Because see, suction, and even today, I watched a TV commercial last night, it was on, that the shark or something. We never lose suction. <clears throat> of course you never lose suction, but you've lost airflow, which is what you have to have cleaning about. You have to have movement of air from point A the point B with something in the middle trapping the dirt in order to have cleaning ability. End of conversation. And anybody that can't understand that's an idiot. Okay? Now they'll come up, they'll 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 come up with other reasons why they can't buy. But remember one thing, there's two there's two objections, the real one and the one that sounds good. If you don't go into their bedroom with the rainbow mate <coughs> and take a sample on their bed, you want to talk about grossing somebody out? Okay. And you don't necessarily, you know, look, I always tried to go in the kids' room because, you know, sometimes mom and dad are a little funny about you going into their bedroom. So I go, let me show you something. I just start, I just walk into the kid's bedroom. Here, check this out. I just take the rainbow and I'm off. So I take, use the power nozzle, is that okay? You can do that. Marissa does it in every house, I must say. You ever go with a writer that's got one with her, gee, you didn't do the mattress yet. <laughs> There's only one little, well, it, it has happened where those little rotary brushes on the outside have caught a, caught a string on the sofa on the uh, the mattress. Okay. Uh, so, what, what, which what do you recommend using? I would use the rainbow. If you use like if you the just, rainbow if it's the little one, the green one. Green the the green 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 well, if you just take the sheet off and the mattress pad, if you do it over that, it does the same thing. Right. Right. Yeah. What I do is when I get to this spot right here, 
I go, now we got we got a tool for every cleaning job that you might, you know, that comes like with your regular germ spreader there. You know, dust brush, upholstery tool, crevice tool, blah, blah, blah. One thing we do have that they don't have a lot of times is the coil cleaner and the plastic bag to collapse the cushions. Mm -hmm. But it's all in there. <coughs> you get all that. But I'm not going to bore you by showing you each one of them because you've seen them before. That way I save myself about 20 minutes. What am I going to take that 20 minutes and use it for? The contract? Nope. Demonstrating my rainbow attachments. Power nozzle, aquamate, rainbow mate, whatever it is you're showing. Now one thing, if you, look, would you say that um, having demos is, like if you don't have a demo, you're out of business, right? Yes. No show, no doubt, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So it's very important that we not only get referrals, but we get instant sets and green lights and all that good stuff that gets us our demos, right? <coughs> okay. Why in the world would you take one of the most important parts of our business and sell it with a picture? Oh, well, here's a picture of the Aquamate. This shampoos your rub. Yeah. Oh, here's a picture of the mini jet. This does your upholstery. Oh, here's a picture of the mini mate, the rainbow mate. Uh, you could, uh, use, most of you are showing that because you're using it on the mattress. Okay. Um, why would you take what gets us the demos and use pictures to sell it? I want to take that. I want to take the time. I'm showing these attachments, they, which they've seen a hundred thousand times because they all have them, and I want to show them the attachments they don't have that are going to get me the leads. Mm -hmm. Aquamate, Mini Jet, uh, the, the Floor Care Package, um, the Rainbow Mate, the Rain Mate. Now you're showing the Rain Mate up front, you're using it as a gift, so you're, you're showing them the Rain Mate. You're probably showing, I know you're showing them the power nozzle because it's part of the machine, and you're showing them probably the mini mate, the rainbow mate. I call it the mini mate because I would I would assume you all have one of those to show. Now that young lady back there didn't, but Jane told her he'd give she'd yeah. give her one. Yeah, if you don't, I can give you the. Listen, and and I hear all the reasons why. Well, I don't. I, it takes too long. It's hard to clean them up because you got to clean everything. We look. Yeah. Don't ever take a dirty attachment into somebody's house. Okay? And I've taken Aquamates. I've been on demos where somebody pulls out an Aquamate and it looks like they just shampooed the Taj Mahal with it. Okay? You can't do that. So you therefore you have to clean it, right? And the dealer doesn't feel like cleaning it, especially if they didn't sell yet. But let me tell you what the Aquamate demo does. Sometimes it turns a non-sale into a sale. And it is certainly one of the most important things in your lead program, because I believe the Aquamate they can get for free on four demos or whatever it is on that lead sheet over there. Okay? I think the rain jet is actually a lot more impressive because people are don't have that. Now here's what you do. I made a compromise with people. The mini jet. I've made a compromise. Okay. If you're not going to show them the aqua, okay, at least get the, the four minute, the three minute video of the aqua. It's in the, it's on rainbow.net, it's in the marketing director handbook. So all you do is download it into your phone or your iPad. That's why I would use an iPad for my book, because yeah. I'd have all those videos on my iPad. Okay. But I'm going to demonstrate extraction. I got to demonstrate extraction because they can see how the, the Aquamate extracts off the carpet but they're not seeing it live. So what I'm going to take is the mini jet and I'm going to pull stain with the mini jet. While the Aquamate demo is playing on my phone or iPad. Okay. 
okay? There's two things I'm not going on a demo without. A mini jet and a mini me. The miniature power nozzle and the little stain puller. The <clears throat> rainbow mini me. You know, the rain jet. Okay. The rain, no, the, the mini jet. The rain jet. <laughs> yeah, the mini yeah. jet. Yeah. Okay. You have one? Just my own. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not going to show the Aquaman, at least show the mini jet. Okay. Okay. That way, at least they get to see. But put all those videos on your on your uh, phone. You don't even have to have an iPad. You can put them on your iPhone or a Droid or any kind any kind of phone you got. You can put them on there. Okay, and it's literally a three-minute video of the Aquaman. So they're kind of looking at the Aquaman, and they're watching you pull the stain with the mini jet, and they get. Now this is for your upholstery and such, and steps and things. But you can see the bigger application right there is for the carpet. <clears throat> now they now they want the Aquaman. Yeah. When you when you close, like I know, because this shows how it ha includes this, you add you add the power nozzle as almost like an additional thing for free, or is it just part of the? We always do. Yeah. Okay. The rainbow was this much. The power nozzle is this much, bringing the total to this much. Mm -hmm. However, if you do the following, I can get you. We, we have a first call discount. Trade in your old vacuum cleaner. Give us eight names that you think people that you think should know this type of equipment's on the right. market and order today you get this off and then get the package for this yeah okay. the rainbow we always price the rainbow separately from the power nozzle got it okay do you know what they suggest apparently we don't do that anymore and no i'm just yeah, saying I just, yeah the old books were set up like that right. the rainbow was this much How, yeah. power nozzle was this much and they even had a spot for the Aquaman, the old book. It was this much, you know, and uh, you add all that up and it would come to like, you know, a high number yeah. and we'd give them a discount for doing those three things, bring it down to this number. And you can get your power nozzle included and you can get your Aquaman on the lead program. Because all you need to do is help me get on, all you gotta do is contact four of those people Oh, four of the eight names? They, yeah. Okay. Contact four of those people, let them know who I am. And get four of them to look. They don't have to buy or anything. All they got to do is look and you get your Aquamate free. I, I keep the Rainmate in a little bag, okay? I don't want them to see it because the second they see, when they see stuff, they want, us, they want me to get on with it. Because they've already braced themselves. They've already decided before I got there that they know we're coming and they're not going to buy anything and they swear to God they're not going to buy anything and no matter what we talk to them into, they're not going to buy anything. So I keep the Rainmate in a little bag, okay? I don't want them to see it because the second they see, when they see stuff, they want us, they want me to get on with it. Because they've already braced themselves. They've already decided before I got there that they know we're coming and they're not going to buy anything and no matter what we talk to them into, they're not they're trying, it's a game to them. They're going to think, they're trying to get this rain mate and not buy anything, okay? So that's their mindset, and my mindset is that I know that, and I'm not going to let them do that, okay? So anyway, you want the couple sitting next to each other across from you, okay? Don't let them be on other parts of the room, because they can shoot each other looks, and you don't, you're not in control of the situation, okay? You have to have them right in front of you, okay? But I say so now, literally, if, if they're like that, what do you, what do you tell them? I say, come sit next to I move them. I tell them what to do. They don't, you know, they don't tell me. People, they say, hey, come on over here. She doesn't bite, does she? Come on. <laughs> Get over here. It's easier if I talk to you this way, you know? And I, I mean, I smile. You know, I say, come on, it's easier. I can't. What do you want me to be like the exorcist? <laughs> come on, get over here. You know what I mean? But make them sit there. And that's important because yeah. they will try to do shit like that to you. They'll be glaring at each other, you know, I and mean, all kind of shit. So get them where you can control that. And then um, I just say, no, listen, did, um, did, your, did, did uh, Jessica tell you anything about the presentation? Not a word. No? Good. She did a good job. <laughs> the reason I'm asking that, well, there's two things. One is I do want to know if she did or not. It, mostly because I want to know if... I don't really care what she told them, and although I do, but the reason why is I want to know, is she, is she doing it right, okay? One, did she listen to me, okay, or listen to, you know, is she following the directions, you know, is she teachable, or is she doing her own rebel way, okay? The other thing is, if she is telling everybody it's a vacuum, this lady is going to be calling me in a week, crying and whining, ah, this is so hard, nobody will look, ah. it's because she's doing it wrong, okay, and I'm going to have to have a conversation with her after the demo and explain that to her, okay? That's why I'm asking that question, okay? It really is irrelevant what they tell me, okay? But that, it's just for teaching purposes. So anyway, I say, well, good. Um, okay, well, I really appreciate you taking your time. And um, I don't know if Jessica told you, 
But um, she just recently got our big machine, and um, she's, she's working on getting it for free. Okay, and by you guys looking at the presentation today, you're helping her get it for free. So we really, really appreciate you taking your time, and if you guys like it and you decide you want to get yours for free, you're more than welcome to, so just let us know. And if you don't, hopefully you can recommend us to other people. Is that fair enough? That's fair. Okay, now notice I said three how many times? Five or six. Okay, I'm going to say it 20 times in the house, and count. Keep it in your head. you got to say it at least 20 times, okay? I'm going to keep saying it. Free, free, free. Now, I said, listen to what I said. I said, she got our big machine. Do they know what it is? They don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And she's getting it for free. And the way she gets it for free is she gets it free by looking at, or by you guys looking at the presentation. So we really appreciate you looking at the presentation, helping her get hers for free. And if you like it and want to get yours for free, then you're more than welcome to do so too. And if not, you're welcome to people. Listen to that big blurb. They don't know what the hell I just said. They said free, 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 right? Do you recall me saying this in your house? You're probably thinking, what the hell is this lady talking about, right? And so, anyways, but that's how I started. And I say, now listen, um, have you ever heard of our company? You ever heard of Rainbow? Mm -hmm. Yes? No? No. no. Ever heard of Rainbow? No? no. Okay. Well, anyway, our company's been around for a really, really long time. Okay, it's been around since 1936. Um, our products are manufactured in Michigan. They're sold all over the world. We are a member of the Direct Selling Association, which is important. A lot of companies are fly by night. Um, you do have to meet certain standards to be a member of the Direct Selling Association. Also, if, if you ever do want to purchase any of our products, the only way we're allowed to do business is in-home presentation. We're forbidden from selling in stores, on the internet, only in homes. And that's the way we've done it from the very beginning. Um, now, okay, basically, um, what happened, or we're here for four reasons. One is thank you for your time. Okay, I present you with a gift. We're gonna give you a gift for looking. Remember, this is hidden away. <laughs> I just didn't put it away because it's got water in it. Okay, and, by, and, and it doesn't have water at this time either. Okay, when I get in the house, it's still like dry in my thing. Okay, they don't know about it. Don't put water in it yet. Okay. Okay, so anyway, um, I invite you to our open house. We, we are, um, we're starting to have these customer appreciation night dinners at our new office, and um, you're more than welcome to come. And if you know of anybody, or, uh, get your opinion on a product. Also, if you know anybody who's interested in making any extra money, part-time, full-time, I know it's summertime, a lot of, you know, sometimes um, maybe you might have adult kids or teenage kids that need jobs and stuff like that. If you know anybody who's interested in making a little extra money, let us know. Um, and cut, you can come to our open house. If you want to get the big machine for free, let us know, okay? Also, get your opinion on our product and ask for your help, okay? If you like it and you could recommend us to people, that would be great, okay? Now, what happened was um, asthma and allergies have gone up 80% in the last 15 to 20 years in America. And one of the reasons why that happened is they changed the energy standards, okay? People started getting better windows, better doors, better insulation. Everyone's gotten really good at sealing up their home to save energy, and what ends up happening, they end up sealing in dirty air, okay? Whatever comes in your house, can't get back out, and it's causing problems. Now, does anybody in your family have any um, allergies, sinus issues? Allergies. Do you, do you know what you're allergic to? <coughs> um, some major ingredients in skincare, hair color, lotion, stuff like that, but there's still stuff in the air. Where oh, yeah, it'll yeah. get like drying around my eyes and scalp and stuff. It's pretty bad around here this time of year. How about yourself? Seasonal. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Any of the kids? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. it, it's bad. The thing is, I try to get my information from other sources. Okay, I don't want people to think, yeah, of course your company said, you know, is, is just saying this, okay? And I, I did a lot of research. So anyway, um, this is an article. This was in the USA Today a couple years ago. The Department of Housing and Urban Development did a study. They tested the air quality in different homes, and they found that then one in three homes, the air could pose health risks. Okay, it says poor indoor air causes 40% of asthma, which has tripled among children since 1980. Okay, and a Surgeon General was recommending they needed to take steps to correct it like they did to remove lead and asbestos. It's that serious of a problem, okay? These are some other facts from the American Lung Association that you might be aware of, okay? 85% of infections and parasitic diseases are caused by what we breathe, not by what we eat or drink. Um, in fact, most of the deaths resulting from tuberculosis, diphtheria, pneumonia, and other contagious diseases are caused by dust in the home. Um, indoor air pollution costs the nation up to $100 billion annually in medical expenses and less productivity. It accounts for half of all illnesses in the U.S. each year. Uh, pneumonia is caused by dust, not by colds and exposure. If you think about it, in the winter time, a lot of people, you know, say, "Oh, you know, you want to go outside and get sick." You're not getting sick as you're going outside. You're getting sick as you're stuck inside all the time. You're breathing in the germs in the house. Okay. Um, at least, in fact, the two most common times people get sick are in the fall when the kids go back to school. If you notice, every year, right before or right, right before school time starts, there's all these articles in the paper about H1N1 and all these different, you know. Sicknesses, and if you notice, once the kids have been separated all summer, they get back together. You know, in the school year, they're around each other. Three weeks later, they're all getting sick. Watch Facebook now; you'll see all your friends in the different parts of the country. Three weeks after kids come back, same thing happens after Christmas. 
they're uh, they're separated over Christmas break. They go back to school, and 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 you know that's when people start getting sick. It's because of the germs, okay? And nine out of ten people who have allergies are allergic to ordinary house dust, okay? So it's a very 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 serious problem. Can we get copies of all these? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so it's a fact. Obviously, every day you're going to breathe several hundred cubic feet of air. Pure air is just as important as pure food or food water, right? Okay, and I already asked you, do you suffer from headaches, irritated eyes, dizziness, coughing, nausea, sore throat, nasal discharge? It's actually really good to read this paper. I'm, I'm making a side note because sometimes if you ask people if they have allergies, like my sister. My sister's a perfect example of this, okay? My sister lives in a brand new home. She's sneezing, all this crazy stuff. She has a dog. She thinks she doesn't have allergies, okay? But if I say, do you have headaches? Yeah. Irritated eyes? Yeah. Dizziness? Yeah. Coughing? Yeah. Sore throat? Yeah. Nasal discharge? Yeah. Okay. She does too have freaking allergies. She doesn't want to have allergies. She didn't have allergies her whole life. She doesn't want to think she has allergies. She's in a brand new home and her brain, oh my God, this is our brand new home. We shouldn't have allergies in my brand new home. Certainly if she finds out she's allergic to her dog, that would devastate her because she has to, I mean, she's, it's her dog. And you know, that's like saying you're allergic to your child. You know what I mean? So at the point I'm trying to make, she will tell you all day long she has no allergies and she's full of shit. She does not know. She does too have allergies. In fact, she, she's been saying this for years. She had no allergies. And then just about two weeks ago, she sent me something in an email saying something about, what kind of allergies do you have? I think I have asthma. No shit, okay? So anyway, but the point I'm trying to make is if you say that to people in their house, and also realize too, in a house, a lot of times people are gonna, you might run into those kind of people that try to say no a lot, okay? Just to stump you, like, even if they're lying, okay? So they might say, oh no, I don't know about you, okay? But if you ask these things, someone's gonna pop up and say, yeah, you know, I do, okay? So anyway, polluted air can be responsible for these symptoms, okay? We can't really do anything about the air outside, but I could probably help you indoors, okay? It's a fact, the air inside your home may be more hazardous to your, hair, to your health than the air outside, okay? The EPA says the air inside many homes and communal establishments is worse than the outdoors. In our determination to save energy, many, many of us have been effectively sealing in dirty air, okay? Um, and that's the EPA saying that, okay? Um, a leading American allergist, Dr. Alfred Zahm, in his book, Why Your House May Endanger Your Health, says some physicians are now viewing house dust as an occupational hazard for the homemaker, both because house cleaning stirs up enormous quantities of dust and because the homemaker spends most of the time in the house breathing it in, okay? It's a pretty serious problem, wouldn't you say? You know? Now, the thing is, I look around your house and it's very, very clean, okay? And you know when the sun comes in the windows, you can see the dust in the air? This is just a bright light, okay? And it's, it's going to show you. Now, it's kind of bright in here. The best thing, in a, if you're in a house that's all lit up, if you have the ability to go into a darker room, like a home theater room, or shut the blinds, or turn the light off, do it, okay? It makes a lot better, a much greater impact. If it's all light and bright in there, it's hard for them to see the dust, okay? But anyway, see, watch. In fact, is there a switch over there? Watch the difference. Turn that light switch off. Okay, watch. Let me do it first with the light on. Okay, here. I'll do it with the light on. See? Now, one thing when you do it, once again, scrape the lamp, push the button, and stick your hand about two inches under the lamp. You, the reason I'm doing that is you've got to teach them where to look. If you just go like this, first of all, I've seen dealers go like this, and they're glaring the people, you know, then, then the people are blind, they can't see anything. And then the other thing is, if you go like this, they don't, you know, a lot of times they don't know where the hell to look. They don't see anything. So that's why you got to scrape it, you hit get, it, and go like this. Do you get closer to them or not? Yeah. I okay. Try. Okay, I'm just saying, is it better? Because I can't yeah, really see that's from what I'm my place. See? But see how I'm sticking my hand in there? But see, that's what I'm saying. If you turn the light off, now watch this. Much better, right? Look at that. Yeah. See how as you're going up? Look at all that. See? So anyway, but and, and you can turn it back on. Do, do they vacuum in here, Jenny? Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you can get dust everywhere, okay? I don't give a shit if they have hardwood floors, if they have leather furniture. Do it on the leather furniture, you know? Do it on the drapes. Do it on the blinds. Bang on their things on the ceiling. Like, you know, um, bang on their vents. And then also you can take the people, okay? You said you had seasonal allergies, okay? Some people would be wise ass. Well, I have outside allergies. I don't know if seasonal. Okay, well, guess what? Come here, Kim. Can you come here for a second? Okay, here. Look at that. Now, I assume your shirt was clean when you put outside? Yeah. Okay, I figured. Anyway, but the thing is, see, you, the, th the thing is, when we go outside, okay, these particles are really small, okay? They get everywhere. Look at pollen when it gets on your car. My car's black, okay? If pollen gets on it, it turns yellow, right? So when you go outside, you're getting dust on you, you're getting, it's in your hair, it's everywhere. You know, you, it's tiny little particles. You don't really see it. The problem is, um, once you bring it inside, guess what? It stays. It stays, okay? And I actually had a pharmacist, this is, I mean, a couple years ago, a pharmacist, because I, I I used to have to take Claritin D every day for four years, then I used the rain, rainbow and Raymate run them all the time and I didn't have to take it, but then I went out registering, that was it. And I was dying with my allergies again. And the pharmacist said to me, because I said, gosh, this is terrible, like, 
I didn't realize it was allergy season or whatever, <laughs> you know, because I've been walking around outside. And he said, first of all, that mold spores are really bad at certain times of year. And he said, the other problem is because most people make the mistake of wa walking inside their house with their clothes on. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he goes, people are supposed to take, he, he said, like, matter of fact, well, people are supposed to take their clothes off before they go outside. And I'm like, well, I don't think most people do that really, you know? And then, but, it, you know, like, I guess if you have a mud room or something. Yeah. But he said, well, he said, you better, because once you get inside, that pollen and all that stuff, it gets in your furniture, it gets in your carpet. He said, God forbid you walk into your bedroom with it on. Gets in your bed, you're gonna roll around in that stuff all night long. You wonder why you wake up in the morning sneezing and coughing and you know, funny eyes or whatever. And that's the truth. He said outdoor allergies turn into indoor allergies because of that, you know. So anyway, um, you will find dust. Make make dust somewhere, okay? And then and I say now, what would you know? Most people think dust is no big deal, light dirt, okay? But actually, there's a lot of different things in dust. It's kind of gross, okay? It can have pet dander, mold spores, pollen, moss, cigarette smoke, fireplace soot, fleas, ants, mosquitoes. Paint, plastic, rubber, nylon, beetles, ticks, wood, fiberglass, cockroaches, dust mites. Now listen, I'm not trying to say that your house has bugs in it, like cockroaches. But once again, okay, for example, if you go to the Home Depot, you think there might be a cockroach somewhere in that big giant warehouse? Mm -hmm. You don't know what's in the bathroom at the McDonald's, do you? Okay, when you walk into places like that, guess what happens? Whatever dust is in the air gets on you. And these particles are kind of small, aren't they? Can you tell, can you, oh see, I just burnt the bulb out. No, it's loose. Oh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, okay, but can you tell what these particles are? Oh, that's a piece of fly, and that's a piece of dead skin. There's part, they're small, you don't know what it is. You know, and the other thing is too, like like I was saying, you might not have bugs in your house, but if you ever do spring cleaning and fall cleaning and, and pull up your windowsill, you know, invariably there's some dead fly in there, right? Well, it has one wing now, it had two when it came in your house. Ashes, ashes, dust, dust, you know what I mean? So anyway, there's all kind of things in dust, okay? And many people are more allergic to the dust mite spores than the other house dust components, okay? Now, it's a fact. You familiar with dust mites, I'm sure? Mm -hmm. Most people are, okay? 90% of America's homes have it, okay? They're very small, 7,000 can fit on your fingernail. They thrive in high humidities, warm temperatures. The bulk of their food is sloughed off human skin particles, and it's the dust mite waste, not the mites themselves that trigger asthmatic and allergic attacks, okay? Um, now this is kind of gross, okay? Once again, the average home a year, okay, creates 40 pounds of dust a year because they're so sealed up. That's a lot of dust, okay? If you go to the store and you buy flour or sugar by the pound, imagine 40 pounds, okay? And this is a big house, okay? This is bigger than 1,500 square feet. So that's a lot of dust, right? Um, and it says right here, um, uh, uh, the, the director of the, uh, Rose Cardinal, director of the program services of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, D.C., she says, the problem is inhaling the protein from the fecal pellets of the mites. She says, do not use dusters, mops, <coughs> or brooms. These utensils merely rearrange the dust. And most conventional airbag equipped vacuums work against you. They vent the dust out of the exhaust hatch and into the air again. A thimbleful of vacuum dirt was demonstrated to contain 5 million germs, okay? This is not our company. Okay, this is the lady named, what is her name again? Rose Cardinal. Director of Program Services at the Allergy and Asthma Foundation of America. You think this lady might know what she's talking about? That's her job, right? And it says here, if you think your modern, well-insulated house is a safe haven from all allergenic germs, think again, okay? The, the, the newer homes are called super-insulated homes. They have better insulation. Guess what? The allergen level's 200 times higher than the outside, you know? It's a very, very, very serious problem. And this is this is what really impressed me, okay? Now listen, I used to be with another company, okay? And I, and I say this in the house, okay? I'm, I'm, don't think I'm diverging, I'm saying this to the customer. Look, I used to be with another company, okay? I did a lot of research when I came to this company. The reason I'm saying that, I don't wanna hear at the end I gotta do research, okay? I did genuinely do a ton, a ton of research when I came to this company, okay? I've been with the other company 20 years. I did a lot of fucking research. We weren't allowed to start our day until we went on the internet and found, now I'm digressing, we didn't, we weren't allowed to start our day until we went on the internet and found new articles every day amongst ourselves about dust and dust mite allergies. We had to like top each other. Who got the best article that day online, okay? So I did do a lot of research and I also had to be convinced that what I was selling was not bullshit, you know what I mean? So I did do a lot of research, okay? I've already done the research, I have the research, it's right here. So no one at the end, and that's why I'm gonna keep saying, I did a lot of research, I did a lot of research, I did a lot of research. You see my book is not like a normal book? You see how mine's got my own research in here? Okay, how at the end if I keep saying that, are they gonna say, I need to do research? Oh, do you? Okay, great, well guess what? I'm gonna go clean the bucket here, you can research, here. <laughs> There's nothing more to research, okay? I really want, I want these in color too. I love that they're highlighted. Yeah, and you can do it. I can get, yeah. 
But I mean, do you see I'm saying these things for a point, okay? Right, yeah. And it's the truth. I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's the truth, okay? Now this, this really impressed me, okay? This is not, this is a fact sheet. See, it says fact sheet. <laughs> I say this is not a fact sheet. Okay, this is not our company saying this. It's a fact sheet from Ohio State University, Department of Entomology, bugs, okay? This is kind of gross, okay, it's talking about dust mites, okay? It says here, one of the most strongly allergenic materials found indoors is house dust. It's heavily contaminated with the fecal pellets and caskets of house dust mites. Estimates say that dust mites may be a factor in 50 to 80% of asthmatics, as well as eczema, hay fever, and other allergic ailments. Symptoms are usually respiratory, but other reactions can include headaches, fatigue, and depression. So guess what? There's a lot of people out there that don't think they have allergies, you know? But that now they're finding a link with headaches, migraines, things like that. Um, and this is really gross. The wheeze-inducing proteins are digestive juices from the mite gut which are potent. Exposure to the mites in the first crucial years of life can trigger lifelong allergies. There's no cure, only prevention. You must control your dust mite levels, okay? So anyway, the whole idea with our products, okay? Um, if you think about it, if you, um, we use Mother Nature. If you think about it, um, Mother Nature uses water to clean the air, okay? Um, if you think about it, if you drive down a dirt road on a dry day, what do you see? Lots of dust. Okay, you go down the same road, and th on a rainy day, there's no dust, right? Hey, Siri. Siri's crazy. Okay, but anyway, so the whole idea is our products use water to collect the dust. Here. Okay, so I'm gonna. This is the countertop room, and I put water in it. Now you guys just put water in. It. So now I'm gonna plug this in. So I, I put this on the table now. Okay, so this here is the ready It's the countertop version of our product. It only uses water as a filter. There's no other filters you need to change or buy. It's just plain water. And basically, it's making rain in here, and it's taking the dust and the allergens that are in the air, and it pulls it in the back, and it traps it in water, puts out fresh air. So it's really good for people with allergies. Now, listen to how many times I'm saying the same sentence. Allergies, asthma, pets, kids, smoking, headaches. Okay, I'm going to keep saying that over and over and over and over. I think there's going to be no... If anybody can't grasp the concept, that the, what I'm looking for is people with allergies, asthma, pets, kids, smoking, they're kind of dense, okay? So I'm going to say that. But um, it's good for people like that. And even if you didn't, if you have the choice of breathing clean air or dirty air, what you get to pick? Yeah. Hopefully clean, right? Now, um, I run my little one and my big one 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I never turn them off, okay? And typically after a couple days, um, the water gets kind of cloudy, and so you just got to rinse it out with dish soap and put in new water. But it really works. I used to have to take Claritin D every day for four years. Now that I run the little one and the big one all the time, I don't have to take any more. Now, do you run your little one and big one all the time? The little one stays in the baby's room because of her asthma. Okay. And you run the big one all the time too? Yeah, definitely. You, Always downstairs because my house is small enough to where it uh, permeates through the Do you know the big difference? Oh, yeah. There's, okay. We don't have dandruff anymore. We're not sneezing, coughing. We're not itchy. And with the two big dogs, it's amazing. That's good. Now, okay, always ask the rider. Make them get involved. Some riders talk and some don't, okay? They're there for a reason. They're getting $4,000. Do you think that I, I, I want their help? Okay, they're getting compensated for something, okay, and I want their help. So if they don't start saying, oh, God, it's great, and, and a lot of times they won't because they're not trying to interrupt me, you know what I mean? But ask them, okay? Do you like yours? Now, notice that you guys still don't know what a big one is, okay? And I'm going to keep saying big one, big one, big one, little one, big one, little one, big one. Guess what's going to happen in a few minutes? Where's this big one? Where do you put the big one? How much is the big one? Okay, I'm doing that on purpose. I can throw it out the big one, knowing that they don't know what it is. Do you bring it in the car? That's what I was getting ready to I ask. used to. I used to bring it in the car, and if they didn't give me names, I used to leave. But the problem is, it's not what I can do, it's what I can teach people.